Praise the Lord, everybody. We welcome you to Christ Center Church this morning. My name is Brother Ethan Scarlett. We want to welcome you. So excited that you're here to celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ this morning, the day we call Easter, Resurrection Sunday. We're going to have a great time in the Lord this morning. Um, just here to give you a couple quick announcements, some of the general announcements that we have uh, on a weekly and monthly basis, as well as a few event announcements that we have for the month of April. Every Sunday morning, starting at 9 a.m., we have adult Sunday school. Feel free to join us before our Sunday morning worship service. Uh, we have amazing teachers that are breaking down the word and breaking down scripture in an intimate way. Feel free to stop by and join us. Um, and then during our Sunday morning worship service, we have children's church for ages 5 to 15. Our children are loving Children's Church right now. If your child is not here or you haven't heard about Children's Church from 5 to 15, feel free to get them involved. God is doing some great things in our young people, but in our adult Sunday school as well. We don't want to hide you from the word. Come join us. Every Tuesday evening, beginning at 7.30 p.m., we have our discipleship series. If you're looking to grow in the word of God or... Uh, understand the word a little bit deeper, this is the platform for you. Feel free to see one of our ushers, our greeters, our media team. This happens on Zoom. We can get you the Zoom link and you can join us. If you haven't joined us for our morning connections, I recommend you join us. Monday through Friday from 5 a.m. to 6 a.m., we join on Zoom for a time of corporate prayer. Start your morning off on the right note. God is doing something amazing in our church and we know everything begins and ends with prayer. Whether you wanna join us for five, 10, 15, 30 minutes, or the entire hour, stop on by, join us on Zoom. You don't have to show your face, you can turn your camera off, but we'd love for you to pray with us. On Wednesdays from 12.30 p.m. to 1.30 p.m., we're here in the house for our Wednesday afternoon connections. Feel free to stop by on your lunch break midday just come by pray with us for an hour and you can resume your day but we have this time of prayer and we hope that you will join us this friday we have our north central jersey district conference this year it will be hosted our church right here at four tennis court it's going to be an amazing time of praise and worship and a power-packed word join us this friday here at ccc at 7 30 p.m we hope to see you there. Then on Saturday, the next day, we have our monthly prayer breakfast. Join us at 8 a.m. for an hour of prayer, light refreshments right afterwards, and then our district conference will continue with the business meeting that begins at 10 a.m. Do you have a gift in teaching? Do you have a passion for the youth and the young people? Sunday, April 7th, we'll be having a children's church interest meeting. We're looking for people that will be interested in being a rotational teacher and helping the young people understand the word of God a little bit better. Lesson plans are prepared for you already, but if you have questions or you have a desire, feel free to stay a little bit after our Sunday service, April 7th, and learn a little bit more about the children's church and what's required. Ladies, this next announcement's for you. We have a ladies event coming up Saturday, April 13th from 12 p.m. to 2 p.m. Guys are going bowling. The cost is $25 per person. That does include your shoes. Feel free to see Sister Nicola Wyatt for more details and to lock in your spot. All right, young people, this next announcement's for you. Friday, April 19th, we have our district Move the Mission kickoff rally. This service is happening in Prospect Park, New Jersey. This is not a service that you want to miss. Feel free to join us. Bring your friends. We're going to have a great time in the Lord. Dynamic praise and worship. Dynamic preaching. We want to see you there. Join us Sunday, April 28th for our Friends and Family Day. Invite your friends, your family, your co-workers, your neighbors. It's going to be an awesome time in the Lord. Hope to see you guys there. And these are your announcements for the month of April. Be sure to check us out on social media, on Instagram at CCC Online, like us on Facebook, and subscribe to our YouTube page, both at Christ Center Church. Let's get ready to worship the Lord together.
God bless.
will be no other God before you. You're the first and the last, there will be no. There will be no other God before you. There is no one above There is no one above you. No one above you. can lead us, lead us to freedom. You say, no one, no one, no one. Who else can heal all our sins and diseases? No one, no one, no one. And who else can walk, walk on the water? No one, no one, no one. Who else can answer, answer by fire? No one, no one, no one. Be 
let's not stop this worship this is the day that the Lord has risen you guys here came in here dancing with gratitude saying thank you Jesus you rose for me this should be a day of gratitude a day of praise a day of honor a day of worship oh my God you guys should be in here just jumping around just he saved you from your sin. He took all that on the cross for you. I want you to make this personal. I want you to say, he took this on the cross. He went to the cross for me. Come on, lay your hands on you. He went to the cross for me. But I don't want you to just say that. I want you to believe it. He went to the cross for me because he loved me. Thank you for loving me, Jesus. Ha karabo shata. Hey. Hey. Glory to God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you for going to the cross for me. Thank you for loving a wretch like me. When I didn't love myself, you loved me. Me, God. Me. Little old me. You love me. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Come on, let's just praise the Lord one more time. Come on, let's just give him the glory one more time. We got one minute to give him the glory. Come on. He is just as your Lord as he is mine. Give him the glory, give him the glory, give him the glory. Somebody need a breakthrough today, give him the glory. Somebody needs something from the Lord today, give him the glory. Ha! Hallelujah, Jesus. I give you glory, God. I give you glory. I give you glory and honor. In the name of Jesus. In the name of Jesus. Welcome to Christ Center Church on this lovely Easter Sunday. Ah, my God. I don't know about you, but I am grateful. Grateful, grateful, grateful. I want to thank our online viewers today. Joe and Barbara, thank you so much. Barbara, give yourself a hug for me. I appreciate our online viewers so very much. I know some want to be here, but they can't. And I thank God for just giving the opportunity for having this platform for us to still minister to them. Amen. Hallelujah. He has risen. So we're about to go into prayer. There's a few things that I wanted to. I want us to pray for a lady at my job whose name is Emily. Her husband just passed two days ago. And I just want you to pray for comfort for the family. This is someone she was laying next to for double digit years. And now she has to lay in the bed by, your, by herself. So I need you to pray her strength. Because one day, if we're married, that may be us. I pray it not that we all go together and meet him in the air, but it is what it is until. So let's pray for her this morning. I also want Brother Scarlett. Come on up, Brother Scarlett. I want some of our powerful men of valor to come on up. He did not know I was going to do this, but I really felt that I should be doing this this morning. So I need some men to come and lay hands. Men that have been praying. Men that can go to war. Men of valor. I need men that can pray. Hallelujah. Ha! My God. And those that are standing. If you believe in prayer. If you believe in healing. If you believe in that. I want you to point your hands forward I know you have a need so we're gonna pray for your need as well but if you have a need I want you to point your hands forward because I believe as you pray for him your need will be met hallelujah father in the name of Jesus 
Lord God, I pray today, Lord God, for your people, Lord God. Lord God, forgive us of our sins today, Lord Jesus. We don't want to come before you, oh Lord God, in any way, but clean, oh Lord Jesus. So wash us, oh Lord God, from the crown of our heads to the very sole of our feet, almighty God. Lord God, I pray today, Lord Jesus, that you'll touch Brother Scarlet, God, from the top of his head to the very sole of his feet. Father, the day that you took the stripes on Calvary is the day that you've given us the opportunity to come before you for such a time as this. Lord God, we thank you, oh God, in advance because we know you are a healer. We believe in healing, oh God. We know that you're more than able to do exceedingly, to do abundantly, to do above all that we can ask or think. Lord God, have your way today, Lord God. I pray that you'll touch your people today, Lord God. Whatever they need from you, almighty God, I pray that you'll touch them, Lord God. Open the eyes of your people today, God, that they would see, oh Lord God, that it was because of you. Lord God, we give you the glory. Have your way with the man of God this morning. Use him, almighty God, mightily this morning, Jesus. Jesus, you are the son of the living God. Lord God, you gave us breath. You gave us health. You gave us strength. We are here today because of you. And God, let our actions show it. Hallelujah, Jesus. I give you the glory, God. If no one else want to praise you, I'm praising you today, God. If no one else want to lift you up, I'm lifting you up today, Jesus. You are my God. You are my Father. You are my Prince of Peace. If no one believes in you, I believe in you Jesus if no one believes that you're a healer I believe that you're a healer you are more than able to do exceedingly abundantly above all have your way in this service this morning God we bless you Lord God we praise you we give you the honor we give you the glory in the precious and mighty name of Jesus hallelujah stop praying you don't gotta stop worshiping come on that's why we're here we have that freedom this morning continue to put your hands together continue to worship him this morning hallelujah 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 jesus
Continue to worship. You may take your seats. We're going to show a short video. Amen. Hallelujah. Easter to me is the resurrection of Jesus and knowing about when Jesus died for us and how he can forgive us for all our sins. Holiday that is about Jesus really. It's not really about like the worldly things, it's like about the money and stuff. I really think it's like about how Jesus resurrected from the dead. Easter to me, I think Easter is the day that Jesus rose after three days. I, uh, he got out the grave. Easter to me is a celebration of what Jesus did for us all those years ago when he died on the cross to save all of us, even though we were so selfish. Easter to me is celebrating the death of Jesus and how he died on the cross for our sins. I think Easter is like when he rose up from the great. The most important thing everybody should know about the story of Easter is that Jesus is our father and that he died on the cross for us and that he will always forgive us for all our sins that we ever committed. One thing everyone should know about Easter is that Jesus died on the cross for our sins so we could get to heaven and live a holy life and follow his commandments. Jesus was resurrected in three days and that the holiday Easter is more of a um, spiritual holiday and less of a worldly holiday. Not just you know how we have the Easter egg hunts but how that Jesus rose again after three days and that, we, that Jesus died for our sins. I think the most important thing we should know about the story of Easter is that it's not just for hunting for Easter eggs with your friends, it's about celebrating what Jesus did for us. Uh, the most important thing that I think you people should know is that if be because our lives are like this right now where we can repent and ask for forgiveness if we were to sin, um, that would happen, but if he didn't die on the cross for us, we, everybody would be, I'm not going to say bad people, but they wouldn't be as good as they are right now. I think, I think people should know about the story of Easter because, because the, um, people should know that they've been saved by God and not know about, about bad stuff. By showing me the miracle that Jesus can do, or that um, that it made me think that Jesus was really real, 
because of the way that he rose again after three days. It showed me that Jesus wasn't just there just to help us. He did stuff for us so that we would have a chance to be with him in heaven, which I think is really kind of him considering how rude we were and how we pinned him on the cross with nails with a crown of thorns. God didn't die on the cross for our sins. I don't think we, our life would be the same as how it is right now. I think it would affect our life because if like we wouldn't be here if if Jesus has saved us. Nailed, pierced hands and feet. You see, your love was not void. You allowed yourself to be killed for my soul and for those out there in the cold world, washing away those things that are unclean, giving us a name to call on when things seem out of place name to call on in thanks, one name that is grace, mercy, peace, and faith, one name that is safe and worthy of praise. You are much more than a man on a cross. You are a God who taught his followers and is teaching his people, a God who caught the ones in need and is leading them to wisdom and peace, a God who sought what was righteous and holy, wanting for your children to do the same, to acknowledge that you are worthy, to set an example. And as if that wasn't enough, you saved my life and remove my strife. Because of your blood, I am washed clean, and because of your resurrection, I can now see. No longer am I blind because you have rescued me from bondage. You've rescued us. Even the people who bashed you and you say forgive them for they know not what they do, I am in awe of you. The beating you endured, the heartache you endured, the rejection you endured, your weeping, your fasting, the hatred that you endured. All of this for my brothers, sisters, and I. The least we can do is keep you at the center of our focus, allowing others to notice, to notice you, in me, in us, in the church, and recognize you first. Because of the power you took from Satan, the power to break any curse, the power of life and death resting on our tongue, the power to rebuke demons and assert ourselves as the children of God, to emerge from sin and rise to purpose, and do your service. The service of loving, caring, loosing, rebuking, uplifting, righteously judging, whilst being wise and humble. Sharing your gospel, starting with your pertinent symbol, the cross. Meaning much more than a death and a rise again, but love. And that no matter what we do, you'll love us anyway. Reminding us that we can come back to you and be reborn and live again. Live right with you. Can we all stand to our feet and let's give God a high praise in this house. What a wonderful, wonderful presentation from our children. Come on, put your hands together. Let's lift up holy hands before the Lord. And I like what you're doing. Open your mouth and say, thank you, Jesus. We're here because he rose from, again, from the dead. We're here because we can live again because of his death, burial, and resurrection. Today is Resurrection Sunday. I don't know about you, but it's not about a bunny. It's not about an egg. It's about Jesus Christ. And he rose from the dead for the Christian and for the whole world. And this is our holiday. This is our every day. This is everything about our life. That when we were sinking deep in sin, far from the peaceful shore, we were seeking very stain within, seeking to rise no more. But the master of the sea heard my despairing cry. And from the waters, he lifted you, he lifted you, he lifted me. And we're saved, we're saved because of his blood and because of his resurrection. Put your hands together one more time in God's wonderful house. Thank you, Jesus. We have a blessed hope. You may be seated. We have a blessed hope in Christ and I encourage everyone that who has not experienced this blessed hope get in the boat get in the ship get in get in Christ get in Christ today because you will never regret what's gonna happen in your life when you get into Christ he's done more to me than I can ever do for him and he continued to bless us because we had that opportunity welcome to Christ Center Church where Christ is our central focus and we give God thanks on this resurrection Sunday 
not crucifixion, not crucifixion Sunday, resurrection Sunday. We have power, saints of God. We have power through Jesus Christ and because of what he did at Calvary. Thank you, Jesus. And we first want to recognize and honor this wonderful congregation. We want to ask everyone who's here for the first, second, or third time, please stand by, by let's recognize you on this day. If it's your first, second, or your third time, we want to take the opportunity of appreciating you. If you can stand wherever you are in the, in the congregation. Come on. Don't be afraid. We love you. We love you. We appreciate you for coming. You can be anywhere else. God bless you. God bless you. Come on, Christ Center Church. God bless you, sir. God bless you, ma'am. Hallelujah. We ask of you one more thing. If you have not filled out your guest card, even though you're not a guest to us, we just want to keep in contact with you because we love people. We love the kingdom of God, and we want to stay connected to you and you connected to this church. You need to find a church home because you, the only way you can be saved is through the church. And we need to stay connected to you. Make sure you fill out the information desk at the information desk. Or if you haven't, please see one of our ushers and greeters and they will accommodate you. Okay? God bless you. We also, before I continue, I want to honor our pastor and his lovely wife and family that are to my right. God bless them, Pastor Wyatt, Bishop Wyatt, Sister Wyatt. We give God, you can do much better than that. Come on, put your hands together for our pastor. It's a new order. We do that. Praise God. We give God thanks for what he's doing and what he's doing in the kingdom of God. Today is a wonderful day, and we know that we have to give. Say to God, I want everyone to take a glance around this sanctuary. Just look around. If you're here, look over there. If you're there, look over here. You see what's happening? You see a lot of seats. You see a lot of persons in every seat. We believe that God is going to do something in this house. He's already doing something in this house, but you're going to be a part of that. Look at yourself and say, I will be a part of what God is doing in this house. Come on, say it to you. I will be a part of what God is going to do. I will be a part. I will make it personal. I will be a part of what God is going to do in this vineyard. And we know that God is doing something. And the way we can give or way we can do it is by giving. That's the way which we can increase and we continue to see the face of God and, and manifesting his presence in the earth is by giving. That's one of his principles that he has given to God's people. He's talked about giving more than many other subjects in scripture. And we are commissioned to do such because we believe that is important into our growth and to also his kingdom to be expanded. And saints of God, we encourage everyone who even if it's their first time, we believe that God is going to do something great with us. We started out one year ago pr pretty much in the sanctuary. And God is doing wonderful things that he's done already. And I want to encourage you. We were at a fire station. We were at a fire station that had two services. We went down to one service by transitioning here. And look at the capacity of our seating. It's, it's reached pretty much to where we have to expand. I said we have to expand. Let the church say we have to expand. So I encourage everyone, please, please, let's do our great work in these next whatever, how many months, I believe there's some next some eight months left, you have an opportunity today, today, make it your duty today, that you'll be a blessing to the kingdom of God. I'm going to make it personal with this being my place. I'm going to invest in this house. I'm going to see my family grow. I'm going to see my children saved. I'm going to see myself grow in this ministry. That's what he's called us to do. We have to do that. And for us to do that, we got to move some things. Let's say we have to move some furniture. We're going to have to move some furniture, saints of God. And we believe that God is going to expand us, God is going to increase us, God is going to expand us to make, to see this wall move. Like we have to do what God has called us to do because we are in the end of time. And we got to finish God's work that he's given us to start. So I encourage you today to do such. Please follow the, uh, our ways of giving. These are the announcements above us. This is what you can stay connected to us. But the ways of giving is above us. If you don't have anything um, in terms of in cash, you can give in card. You can give by also electronically those who are watching online. Please, don't stop giving. Don't stop giving. Don't stop giving to this church. I implore you, I beseech you that we could be a blessing. I've seen my life increase because of giving. And I want you to know you will be see your life increase dramatically if you give unto the kingdom of God. We also want to honor that our children's church and our children's ministries is having a wonderful, wonderful opportunity to see your children grow it is being successful. People are asking about it, and we're seeing great success of it. 
you can see Brother Tom, he's standing at our fellowship area where that's to my right. He was standing right there with Brother uh, Kyler. He's holding up the children's ministry sign. All our children, you can be led to go there. Of course, we have something wonderful in store for you. We want to stand right now at this time and pray. Oh, yes, for ages 5 to 15, my apologies. Ages 5 to 15, not everybody. 5 to 15, 5 to 15. Ages 5 to 15, please exit your way to the fellowship hall where we can yet um, prepare our youth service for you. We thank everyone for yet coming. Just say, look at someone say, I'm glad that you're here. I'm glad you're here. Look at you say, I'm glad to see you. I'm glad that you're here. We're glad to be in God's wonderful. Glad to be in God's wonderful house. One more time. If we all can stand. If you need an envelope, our ushers are there. Please fill out the envelope specifically. We can definitely get that corrected and provided for you. That you make sure we uh, detail our contributions um, especially for tax purposes at the end of the year. But let's pray right now. Please stand. Let's pray in Jesus' name. Let's believe God that you're going to give to his kingdom whatever you have, some hundred, some sixty, some thirty-four. Father, these are your people. We come to you right now. We believe your kingdom must be expanded because you have given us a mandate that we will expand the four corners of Hamilton, not just Hamilton, across New Jersey. We believe that God is through giving, that we will see our increase. We'll see our families saved, our family blessed. We'll see, oh God, abundance of, oh God, blessings upon us that we may bless the unsaved, those who are lost. They will see what God is doing in our lives. And we pray each and everyone in this house, let's all say amen in Jesus' name. Right now, God bless you. As you get ready to give, let's worship and praise the name of Jesus. Can we lift up his name today? Come on, I thought I was in the Pentecostal church. Can we lift up his name? Hallelujah, hallelujah. Everybody clap your hands. Come on. Everybody, everybody clap your hands like this. You got a tambourine. I want to see some tambourines in the room. So glorify the name of the Lord. Glorify the name of the Lord. Say who is worthy. Who is worthy of all praise that's due his name. Magnify the name of the Lord. Magnify the name of the Lord. Everybody say Jesus, 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 Jesus,
Jesus, everybody call his everybody name. Everybody say Jesus. Jesus, 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 everybody call his name. Say I love to call him. I love to call him. I love to call his name. I love to call his name. Say I love to call him. I love to call him. Say I love to call his name. I love to call his name. Say he is my savior. He is my savior. He is my savior, yeah. He is my savior, yeah. Say he is my savior. He is my savior. He is my savior, yeah. He is my savior. Everybody yeah. say Jesus. 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 Everybody call his oh, name. Say Jesus. 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 Everybody call his everybody name. Everybody say Jesus. 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 Everybody call his name. Say Jesus. 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 Everybody call his name. Everybody say Jesus. Jesus. Jesus.
there's power in the name of Jesus. I don't need power. You don't need power. But when we call on the name of Jesus, power shows up. When we lift our voice and say, Jesus, demons begin to tremble. There is no other name like the name of Jesus. Oh, hallelujah. It's so good to be in the house of the Lord. It's good to see every one of you this morning. As you all came in the door, I don't know, I have a way of just how I process. And I just think of all of our stories together. And everybody that walked through the door this morning, I want you to know I've got a story with you. We have a connection. And I love that. I am so privileged to be doing what I'm doing, pastoring this church. God has given me this awesome responsibility, but it's such a privilege because I get to share in all of your lives, and I don't take that very lightly. Somebody mentioned to me the other day about our church getting so big and I'm not going to be able. I said, don't even open your mouth and say that. I will die trying to make sure we maintain our personal relationship. I'm not trying to get no mega church going. We have this, this is where God has brought us. And he gave us this entire property. And when we knock this wall down just so we can accommodate more souls that are being saved, when we can't accommodate in this property anymore, God might give us Iceland. The ice skating ring over here. My point is, whatever God gives us here, we will take good care of it and do what he wants us to do. But we have to branch out. And we have to start realizing that God wants to save people of every walk of life in every place and not just here. Studies show that people don't want to drive any more than 20 minutes to church. And so when we start to see more people come into the house of God and they drive more than 20 minutes, it's time for us to figure out how we can start something in their community where they don't have to drive that far. So we're not about mega church. We're about the kingdom. And if you go check the scriptures, you'll see there were no mega churches. There were churches all over. But I'm so grateful to be a part of what God is doing. I thank God for each and every one of you. I love you all individually. I love you collectively. Our online congregation, I love them so much. They've been so faithful throughout the years. And these are folks that don't live in the state. Some of them don't live in the state. And they want to be here. And they can't be here. We've, we've tried to turn them on to other churches down in different places where they are, and it's just not the same. So they just join us online for every service, and we thank God for them. And for those who are, will view our service so at some other time, we're so grateful for that. And we want God to bless each and every person who hear from us and hear the word of God and all of what God is doing in this church. We've had a great week this week, starting last Sunday. Minister Bradley preached so awesomely and the presence of the Lord moved. We thank God for that. I'm setting all these men and women of God up. I told them we believe in women preacher in, preachers in this church. I don't know about the other churches, but we know God used willing vessels. And so there's many people that they don't want to respond to God's call. I tease my oldest son all the time and say, you, you didn't respond to God's call for your life. You kept doing what you wanted to do, but he had a son now. And my boy, my grandson, he always watches the service. He's always wanting to hear Papa preach. I said, God will always make it right. And so if you don't want to answer the call, God will bring up somebody in your family to answer the call. Because God wants the world to hear the message of him dying, being buried, and resurrected for all of us. And we got to get that message out. And so it's going to take a whole lot of us to get it out. Men, women, young people, and children. And so we look forward to all the great things that God is doing. But we had a great week this week. Last Sunday was outstanding. Wednesdays, we have Bible studies. It's our Bible study night, our midweek service. And can I tell you, that's where you get established in the Word of God. Too many people affiliate with church and they're not grounded in the Word of God. And this is why we jump around from churches to churches. 
Because when you're not grounded in the word of God, you get pulled in different places when you hear something you like. And you haven't checked it. To see, is it in a book? You just, you just like what you heard, so you went to where, and after a while you get tired of that because then you start realizing, well, this is not for me, and so you leave there. And we don't get settled in any church because we're not established in the word. Well, Wednesdays, we teach you here in this church, and we teach you real good. We're going to stay in the Word. Come on Wednesday nights. We're here from 7.30 till 8.45. It's not a lot of time. But it will be worth it because you will get established and rooted in the Word of God, which will help you to grow and understand who you are in Christ. And nobody will be able to talk you out of what you say you believe. Because it will not be something you just believe. It will be truth that you know. Not something that you're just believing. We can believe anything we want. What I like to tell you is, we can believe a lie. But we can't know a lie. Because lie don't exist. So you can't know it. But you can know truth. Because truth exists. I told them Friday night, we had a service here Friday night. We called it our Good Friday service where we did communion. And what a move of God we had after we did communion. It was so wonderful in here Friday night, and we thank God for that. Sister Josephine, we thank you for being faithful and organizing our service this past Friday night. And all of you that ministered, you did well. I thank God for you. But we had uh, communion, and that was outstanding. But something I told them that I want to just mention to you in passing. We call Good Friday Good Friday because we tend to tell people that Jesus died on Friday, 3 o'clock. And while we understand that he did die, and while we understand that he was buried and he was resurrected, we need to make sure we understand that he actually didn't die on Friday. Because if you did the mathematics, you will see that there ain't no way you get three days and three nights out of Friday to Sunday. But you missed Friday, so you didn't hear that teaching. You see what I mean? We're teaching you the Word of God. And so if you run into somebody that's trying to, well, the devil want to use them to get you to not believe the Word of God, those are things that they challenge you with. You go to some church, and they telling you Jesus rose on died on Friday, rose on Sunday. How you get three days out of that? What you going to say then? Now you're going to want to find out what they believe so you go be with them because you believe that they didn't show you revelation. When in actuality, we've been believing that for many years and haven't learned that mm, we celebrate Good Friday as his, as his death, but it's really not Good Friday that he died. He died Wednesday evening at 3 p.m. Wednesday. It was a Wednesday he died, 3 p.m. And he was in the grave from Wednesday, from 3 p.m. till, what we say, Wednesday to Thursday, 24 hours, Thursday to Friday, 48 hours, right? And so from Friday to Saturday evening at 3 o'clock, that was three full days. And because we don't understand the Middle East, the Jewish calendar, how they do things, we don't realize that just like how your next day in America here starts at 1201. In the Middle East, or in Israel specific, their next day starts at 601. So when he rose at 3 o'clock on Saturday, he was going into a new day. The three days would already pass, he was going into a new day, which 601 made it Sunday. So when they came to the tomb, maybe 6 a.m. Sunday morning, that's why he was gone already. He didn't raise 4 a.m. like we want to think in our mind or 6 a.m. in the morning. No, he rose on Saturday in the evening, completed his three days and three nights in the earth. We got to know this word so nobody can talk us out of it because we're going to be jumping from place to place every time we hear something that we like if we don't know the word. Come on Wednesdays. We're teaching the word of God so you can learn it. And I thank God for all of you this morning that put this service together. We do this together. God has chosen me to be the pastor and the leader of this church. But surely, 
we're doing it together. We have a great team here at Christ Center Church. You want to be a part of the team? Please. We would love for you to be a part of the team. We need many people to serve in many different capacities because we're all serving, starting with me. We serve. We're not here to be pumped up and look at us. We're all servants of God. That's who we are. I'm here to serve you. I'm not here for, to be your bishop. Oh, our bishop. No, I'm not that. I'm just God's servant to serve you. That's all I am. And all of us that serve, that's all we are. Yes, we are his children. But children does chores, don't they? If you're raised in a good household, children does chores. Well, we are his children. We do chores. So if we are the children of God, we will serve and do what our Father wants us to do. Again, I thank all of you. The praise and worship team was outstanding. Thank you. They're always wonderful. Our musicians, they're always top-notch. We love them. And our children's church ministry, oh, man, we, we are so thankful for our children's church ministry and what's going on over there. Every Sunday, they're next door, and they're being taught on their level and learning and having fun at the same time. They can't wait to get out of here when we dismiss them uh, right before we get started. And so we thank God for them. And this morning, as you saw, we incorporated them into our service this morning, and we thank God for that. Um, you, you saw the, the, the outstanding poem that we had and, and was being said by our own um, sister Mariah Revelous, and she, she is blessed and gifted. She is blessed and gifted to write, and we thank God for her and what God is doing in her life. Since she's come to this church, she has just been just all in and doing everything that she can to be the woman of God that God called her to be. I'm proud of her, and I thank God for her. I thank God for the leaders that are leading our children ministry and getting everyone in, involved, and it's just a wonderful thing that we're seeing in our church and what God is doing. A couple of quick announcements before I get into the Word of God. Next Friday at 7.30 p.m., our district conference will be held right here. There will be dynamic preaching, dynamic praise and worship that will include all of our churches. We have 24 churches, actually it's about 25 churches uh, throughout our district, and we're all going to come together here Friday night worshiping and praising the Lord. And then Saturday morning we'll have our business meeting with all the ministers. So we're looking forward to that next Friday. It's been busy, but we thank God for what he's doing. Amen. We also have on sale today, they want me to tell you all this. Some of you don't know, but if you want to know, go check it out. We are selling for a small nominal fee because we want to knock down this wall and expand. So we're trying to raise money in every way. What we call Easter bun and cheese. Some people know what that means, but some don't. If you don't know what Easter bun and cheese is, Go next door after we're dismissed today and see what it is and buy one. You will love it. We have drinks on sale, Easter bun and cheese on sale. We want you to go and enjoy it. Amen. Also, next Sunday after service, come back next Sunday. We're looking for uh, people that are interested in helping to minister to our children when we have children church. We are understaffed over there, and so we need to be staffed up that we don't wear out all of our teachers that are next door teaching your children. So if you're interested in being part of our children's church and you want to teach and you want to, even if you don't want to teach, but you want to assist to keep the children in order, we're grateful for anything that you can do. Meet us next Sunday after service, and we will instruct you on how that will work and how you can be a part of that. Amen? Today after service, we're going to have a dedication. And so I'm looking forward to that. And it's just good to see everybody. Let's stand. We're going to get right into the Word of God. Again, welcome to the house of the Lord here at Christ Center Church. Hallelujah. Good to see every one of you. Wish I had time to have a conversation one-on-one -on -one with all of you. <laughs> I see all of you. I, want, I just want to talk to you and 
just talk about God's goodness and all the great things God is doing in our midst. We serve a mighty God. Amen. Amen. I'm so glad that we serve the true and living God. Because some people say they serve God, but they don't know which, which God that they're serving. Or they're serving some false God. But we serve the true and living God. Luke chapter 18, verse number 31. Luke chapter 18, verse 31. If you have your Bibles, turn with me to Luke chapter 18, verse number 31. We're going to read 31 through 33. And then we'll get to Luke 24. We'll read verses 1 through 7. As you're getting there, can I just tell you one last thing before I start the preaching of the Word of God? Friday evening, while we were here, we, uh, we had different speakers sp spoke on the last seven sayings that Jesus said before he gave up the ghost, before he died. And while we were getting ready to get into that, I sat over there, and I always sit over there when we're having church, and I'm asking God to help me, that I may be a blessing, and what does he want to say to the congregation? And the thought came to me Thursday as we were thinking about the resurrection. Listen to me. The reason why we choose when we come to church, how frequently we come to church, or how infrequent we come to church, the reason why we choose to do it that way I'm not talking about if you're working or all. I'm not talking about that. I'm just talking about our commitment to come to the house of God. The reason why we come in the way that we come is because every time we come to church, we come with the intention of what we can receive. This is from the Holy Ghost, so I don't have to ask you if this is right. Many people come to church or come to the church service, the assembling of God's people, because you need something. And you come, God give me, God give me, God give me. And that always determines how you put out. And just as sure as I'm talking to you right now, I feel like God showed me. Y'all going to be celebrating my resurrection and what I've done. And understanding because of what I've done, you guys can have so many blessings. And all the things that we can have, it's because he rose. Shouldn't we come to praise him and worship him for what he has done for us? Today needs to be the beginning of how our mind works when we say we're going to the house of God. We're supposed to be coming to give him honor, to give him praise, to bless his name, to worship him, to lift up his name. That's why we're supposed to come to the house of God. And like any good parent, every good parent know what their children need. We don't have to go to God and tell him what we need. But we show up saying, God, I need. But can I tell you, if we will come to give him what he needs or what he wants, because he doesn't need anything from us. If we will come and give him what he wants, you will automatically receive stuff you need and stuff that you didn't even know you need. He would automatically give it to you without you even asking. Because the Bible says when the praises go up, the blessings come down. If water don't get uh, vaporized up into the, into the clouds, no rain ever come. But we want rain and we never send up any vapor. The clouds can't give you rain until they're full. But how do they get full? They vaporize the, the water from the earth and it goes up. It's the same concept, we as people, that if we will come and says, listen, my foot hurt, but I'm still going to church. I'm not worried about my foot. I'm sick in my body. I'm still going to church. I don't care. Oh, so many thoughts are running around in my mind. I can't think straight, but I'm going to church. It doesn't matter. If we would just come knowing that there is no situation going on in our life that Jesus can't handle, because as you will hear shortly, when he went to the cross, he handled every situation that we would ever encounter. The situation that you don't even know you're going to encounter, Jesus already took care of it. He already did, hasn't he? So if we will just come and put the focus on him, he will do great things in our lives. Brother Marshall, where are you? Lift your hands up. 
Brother Marshall, he got baptized a few weeks ago. And we have our tradition, which is, it's cool, good tradition. If somebody is sick, well, it's biblical too. If, if somebody is sick, call for the elders of the church to, to, to pray for them. Anointing them with oil and the prayers of faith will heal them. That's what the Bible says. Well, that's cool. A couple weeks ago, Brother Marshall decided, I want to give my life to God. I'm going to get baptized over here in the tank. He had sciatica for many years, back hurting. And so while he were pondering and contemplating baptism, he was worried about how he was going to walk up those steps and get in because he had had back problems for so long. Well, we held his hand. He walked up. We baptized him in Jesus' name. He came up out of the water. No back pain. What is my point of telling you that? We didn't ask God to heal him. We didn't go to God praying, God heal him. No, we did not. We baptized him and God said, because you acknowledge me through baptism, I'm going to give you even more than you bargained for. And he touched him and he healed him. We don't have to go begging God for anything. God knows what we need. What we need to do is worship him, praise him, magnify his name, and we will see great miracles like it ain't nothing. We got to get our word the right way. Too many churches are telling you, just go ahead and praise him. And all the praise is doing is making you feel good, but you go, go out of the house of God defeated just the same because all you did was praise him in your flesh so you can feel good. Too many places are just telling you what you need to hear so you can feel good. I'm here to tell you, God knows exactly what you need and he will do exceeding and abundant more than you can even ask or think. He will do that for you. So you don't have to go begging or go groveling. Oh God. Just worship him and praise him. Don't let your praise or your worship be for you to feel good. Give it to him. In some places that's the message. But that ain't the message. Luke chapter 18, verse 31. Then he took unto him the twelve and said unto them, Behold, we go up to Jerusalem and all things that are written by the prophets concerning the Son of Man shall be accomplished. For he shall be delivered unto the Gentiles and shall be mocked and spitefully entreated and spit upon and they shall scourge him and put him to death and the third day he shall rise again. This is Jesus telling of what would happen to him. In Luke 24 verse 1, The Bible says, now upon the first day of the week, that's supposed to mean something different to you now, because the Bible was written from a Middle Eastern standpoint, not from a Western standpoint. We're in the Western part of the world, where the Bible was written from, with all the culture that was there, Middle Eastern. So when you read the Bible, it says, now upon the first day of the week, it's talking about 601 Saturday evening. I lived it. I went to Israel. And I remember when their Sabbath started. Their Sabbath started Friday evening at 6.01. It's like the street went quiet. No cars driving. As a matter of fact, at the hotel where we were staying, they programmed all the elevators to stop at every floor because they're saying, we don't do any work on the Sabbath because that's what they believe. And so on Friday evening at 6.01, only thing that happens is worship. The only people that's working in Israel on Friday evening at 6 o'clock are people that are not Jews. So if you're in the hotel and they're serving you, they're not Jews because every Jew is now celebrating the Sabbath. So 6.01 Friday, stone cold quiet, nothing. Quiet Friday evening because that's their new day. And it goes on till Saturday evening at 6 p.m., and 6.01, I looked out my hotel room, noise. I said, this is incredible. 
incredible how disciplined they are in keeping to their Sabbath. I looked out and everything. You just start to see movement, movement, movement. And so when you hear this Bible talk about the first day of the week, they're talking about Saturday evening going into Sunday. We, as soon as we hear first day of the week, we're thinking early Sunday morning. Now up on the first day of the week, very early in the morning, they came unto the sepulcher, bringing the spices which they had prepared and certain others with them. And they found the stone rolled away from the sepulcher. And they entered in and found not the body of the Lord Jesus. And it came to pass as they were much perplexed thereabout, behold, two men stood by them in shining garments. And as they were afraid and bowed down their faces to the earth, they said unto them, why seek ye the living among the dead? A lot of people preach about that as well because it's a lesson that we need to ask ourselves. Why are we going among dead people looking for people that are living? He is not here, but he is risen. Remember how he spake unto you when he was yet in Galilee. That's the text that we read earlier when he told them what would happen. What did it say? The Son of Man must be delivered into the hands of sinful men and be crucified and the third day rise again. Brother Tom put all of this together and I appreciate it so much. He took his time, effort, this is the tomb, empty tomb, stone rolled away, cross empty, because the cross is empty, the tomb is empty. And I'm going to help you this morning to understand what this is all about. I want for you today to truly put your focus on the Lord Jesus Christ. And because this is the church where you can just praise God at any time, take your liberty and praise God today. Whatever you feel as the word of God comes, just begin to express that. Because God wants to speak to our heart this morning and he wants to do great things in this place today. But you can't make it about you. You need to make it about him. Without him, know you oh my mom she's just awesome brother Tim my grandma if it wasn't for my grandma my mom wouldn't be here and so we honor our grandparents and our parents and that's right but what's our thought if, if it wasn't for her I wouldn't be here well, let's take it a little further than that. If it wasn't for the Lord, we wouldn't be here. It's about him. But we tend to continue to make it about us. It's not about us. The breath that's in your lungs right now, if he decide I'm going to pull it, you finish. We're looking at your corpse. But we're still making it about us. Me, me, me. If we will cut that out and say him, 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 you will get to experience that abundant life that he talks about. Because as you're living that abundant life, you will be walking around smiling. Because as soon as everybody tell you how great you are, you laugh and you say, no, nah, it ain't me. It's the goodness of the Lord. It ain't me. It's God's blessings. But you only experience that if you live your life making it about him. Father, in the name of Jesus, uh, I thank you for your presence. I feel your presence. Lord, allow me to be your conduit even now, your, your vessel, your oracle to rightly divide your word of truth, Lord God. Hide me behind the cross and Lord, speak to your people that they may hear what you're saying, Lord God, that they may experience the power of your 
Spirit, the resurrection power to transform lives that they will not leave if they don't want to the same way they came in. But if they desire to leave differently, that the power of your Spirit will transform and renew and heal and set free, restore and deliver. Have your way in this place, oh God. Let your will be done and your kingdom come as we give you the praise and the honor. In Jesus' name, you may be seated. Today, just for a few moments, I would like to share the word of the Lord with you on this simple, simple topic. Simple, but it's powerful. Jesus. 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 Whenever I'm going to preach to you, minister to you, so often I don't even get to sleep right. I'm tossing and turning, and I know the routine. It doesn't feel good. You want to sleep because you're saying, I want to get rest. I want to feel strengthened so I'm able to minister to the people, but you can't rest because God's word and God's spirit is just moving you. Christianity literally hangs on the resurrection of Jesus Christ. It proves that Jesus was who he claimed to be. He was God Almighty in the flesh. For many of us, we have attended places that tells you that the Son of God died for our sins. And while that's true, too many of us have in our mind that there was another God, a sun God that went and died for our sins and we overlook and misunderstand that the Son of God is actually God Almighty who became fleshly human. Just like you, who would be a good father, would not send your child to go die for you. Our God wouldn't send a baby Jesus, if there was a baby Jesus in heaven, to die for him. God became human through the virgin birth, came into this world as a baby, lived and breathed and moved among us as almighty God, but still being human at the same time. And he, he was the only one that was capable of dying for our sins because he was the sinless lamb of God. And every person else that walked this world was a person that sinned. God couldn't find anyone that was sinless. This is why it's important that we don't walk around trying to make ourselves more important or more special than another person. Because you sinned just like I've sinned. We all have sinned. The only sinless lamb was the man, Jesus Christ, who is God Almighty that walked this earth. And he came in the flesh because only flesh and blood had blood to actually be shed so our sins could be remitted. So God took on human flesh so he could have blood because as a spirit, he didn't have blood. He couldn't shed no blood as a spirit. So he had to take on human flesh so he would have blood that he could shed. But the difference between his blood and your blood and my blood is our blood is tainted with sin and his wasn't. There wasn't no baby Jesus that went to the cross for you and I. It was the creator from the very beginning. Let there be light and there was light. The creator that made Adam and Eve, that's who from the very beginning decided, I'm going to become the sacrificial lamb for my people that they will be saved. I will become human. And how do you come into the world as a human? We missed it. We want to think that he could have came into the world some other way. If God is spirit and he needed to come into the world, how else was he going to come into the world? Like every other human born. You ready for this? This is why as a man of God or a woman of God, a Christian person, you can rebuke demons because demons are illegally present. They don't have flesh and blood, demons don't. They're spirits that we can command to be displaced because they don't belong here. God became human, which made him one of us. He belonged here. He was born into this world. 
And so of all the claims that Jesus made, the claim that he would rise from the dead was the most audacious claim. Jesus allowed himself to be put on trial and crucified just so there would be no doubt about who he was. When he was hanging on the cross, the skeptics and the critics, they mocked him. If you are the son of God, why don't you just come down from the cross and show that you really are God? That's what the skeptics and the critics said to him. However, coming off the cross would have been no big deal for Jesus. But he had something more spectacular planned. I am going to let you bury me for three days. Then I will come back to life to prove to you I am that I am. I am who I said I am. It wouldn't have been no big deal for him to pull the nails out and stepped off that cross. But he says, I'm going to do you one better. I'm going to die and let you bury me. And for three days, I will be in the earth. And on the third day, I will rise and show you how powerful I am. Easter is the good news about Jesus Christ, our Lord, who died for our sins and then rose from the dead. Since Jesus was buried with our sins, I love this, since Jesus was buried with our sins, our sins was also buried. And when he rose, our sins stayed buried. They did not rise when he rose. Our sins are not just washed away, but our sins are buried. Don't you go digging them up. Don't you let nobody else dig up your sins. They were buried when our Savior got buried. You let them stay right there under the dirt. Buried. This is why we're supposed to come out of sin. Because it doesn't make good sense that he took on our sins and had them buried. And here we go. When we're sinning, it's like we dug up all the sins that he buried and said, I'll take those. Don't make a whole lot of sense. 400 hysterical records say when Jesus rose from the grave, he showed himself to 500 people at one gathering. Can you imagine witnessing his death and then seeing him walking around Jerusalem three days later? I envision that. We see Jesus dying and we can't get over it like, my goodness, they really killed Jesus. The man did nothing wrong. He was just blessing us. He, I mean, he rose Lazarus from the grave. I mean, he provided the five loaves and the fishes and, and, and multiplied those so we can eat. He, he walked on water. He, 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 he blessed people, healed the sick, and they crucified him? My God. And so everybody must have walked away that believed in Jesus, just shaking their head, can't believe it, because they saw him die. But then three days later, they looked around. This dude is walking around. <laughs> nah. Then somebody else see. <laughs> this is interesting. Probably some saw and they were like, they just did what I did. But then some people can't keep their mouth shut. <laughs> some people got to say, Yo, 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 that's Jesus. Yo, hey. And they went to go tell some people, yo, Jesus rose. You crazy, get out of here. Just, you got to put yourself there and stop. You know, we, we can do what we do today, but sometimes you got to stop and go through the process mentally, emotionally, say, how did that work? Be real about it. And so finally they realize he did rise. I still do this today. There are people that will, over the years, that have prophesied over my life, and I kind of just like, okay, okay. Appreciate it. God bless you. 
Because if Jesus don't come tell me himself, I'm, that's how I'm doing it, okay? Because I don't know if that person is in the spirit of God when they told me that or they're just making up some stuff. So I said, okay, God bless you, thank you. But when it comes to pass, I said, that dude was in the spirit when he told me what he told me because this thing has come to pass. Well, think about how they begin to embrace that Jesus rose. Yeah, he did say that, didn't he? He did say he would rise in three days. And so it took them a minute to get on board of what just transpired. Christianity was started in Jerusalem. Did you know that? Uh-oh. We like to own everything in America. <laughs> no, but it wasn't. I don't know if you understand that some of the forefathers came to America to practice freedom of religion. So it didn't start here in America. I hate to burst your bubble. But Christianity was started in Jerusalem. It's interesting. Christianity in Jerusalem should have been ludicrous. But you know why it's not ludicrous? There's an empty tomb. If this was fake, it would have got shut down from the very moment it got started. Because the people in Jerusalem where the actual tomb where he got up out of, they would have said, please, he was still there. Matter of fact, we can dig up that, that, that grave and let you see him. But they couldn't do it because he really did rise. So we need to at least stop there and say, if Christianity is legit in Jerusalem, we better get on board here in America. Because the tomb wasn't in America. The tomb was in Jerusalem. And that tomb was empty then. It's still empty today, and it will continue to be empty. Anyone can claim to be God, but how do you prove that you're God? I remember I grew up in the era of the five percenters. That's, that's my era. I was in high school when five percenters, was, I mean, that was a black man, the original man, black man God. We were walking around town, we were building us, we was in a cipher, building. I wasn't in there. I wasn't, in that, I wasn't in that mess. Talking about the black man, the original man, the black man gone. That's what the five percenters were saying. And we let them intimidate us instead of saying, well, God died and rose. Let me see you die and rise, bro. But we ain't asking them that because we just like to go with the flow. We don't want to challenge nobody. But anyone can claim to be God. But they need to prove that they're God. You prove it by raising from the dead. And if anybody else can die and raise themselves from the dead, then maybe I can, they will get my attention. But if you can't die and raise yourself, I'm not talking about nobody praying for you. I'm talking about you dying and being buried. And then three days later, you rise yourself up from the grave. You can't do that. Don't come talking to me about you being no God. There's only one God. His name is Jesus. When Jesus came out of the grave, that one act validated everything else he ever said about himself. Everything God says, you can take it to the bank and believe it. He says, I am the bread of life. And you can take that to the bank and know it. He said, I am the light of the world. You can take that to the bank. He says, I am the door. You can believe that. He says, I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd giving his life for the sheep. You can believe that. He says, I am the resurrection and the life. He says, I am the way the truth and the life he says I am the vine and you are the branches in Revelation 1 and 8 he says I am Alpha and Omega the beginning and the end saith the Lord which is, which was which is to come the almighty God in Revelation 1 and 18 he says I am he that liveth and was dead and behold I am alive forevermore amen Amen. and have the keys of hell and death the one we serve has the keys to hell and death you don't have to go to hell you don't have to die because he has the keys 
Somebody ought to give him praise for that. Oh, hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Can you imagine? He says, I am he that liveth and was dead. And behold, I am alive forevermore. And I have the keys of hell and death. Nobody can send you to hell if you don't want to go to hell. Nobody can make you go to hell. If you go to hell, it's because you want to go to hell. But God says, I've got the keys. And the only way you go there is if you want to go there. You don't have to go to hell if you don't want to. And hear me, when you die in Christ, you, you ain't really dead. You're just asleep. Uh, you're just asleep. I, I love it how we have these funerals and they tell everybody, sleep on. Everybody ain't sleeping on. Everybody is sleeping on because they didn't acknowledge Jesus Christ as King of Kings and Lord of Lords. Ain't everybody sleeping on. Everybody ain't sleeping on because until he becomes your God, until he becomes your Lord, until you decide to follow and obey and submit, you can't sleep on. Only those that are born again, living for God, trusting in God, having faith in God, obeying God, only they sleep on. We are painting these things that God has said in his word in a way to make it sound like we're all good. We want to present God's stuff like, oh, everybody good. Everybody that died ain't good. Lazarus died and the rich man died. Lazarus went into the presence of the Lord. The rich man lift up his eyes in hell and asked for a fingertip of water to cool his tongue. That's the word of God. Everybody that died don't go to heaven. Stop letting the world tell you what the church is all about. Get into the book and hear what God has to say. We showing up in these places thinking everything is all right. Everything ain't all right. I was messing with my young people the other day. I said, y'all come now. We're trying to tell people about how good this is and how, you know, we come to church. Talking about, Let's have a praise break. I messed with them the other day. I, I always mess with the young people. Praise break. They have made that into something when really we're supposed to be praising God. And how we praise God and the spirit move on us, that's just how it goes. But to try to make something into something, God ain't being honored. Praise break is supposed to be, we just, what we like to say, what's that word we use now? Organically. We need to organically just begin to acknowledge him. Back in the old church, this is how we did. The spirit of God is moving. What they like to say? One guy got his hands going like this. And you wonder what's going on there. And before you know it, he start moving. Oh, before you know it, he start. Ah. Before you know it, you start seeing. Because the spirit moves. It ain't no something we just do. It's supposed to be organic. Where the spirit moves in you. And you begin to move. Listen, I love you too much to tell you some craziness for you to, listen, listen, this church ain't about no money. I can tell y'all that right now. Y'all better learn that right now. You gonna get the gospel from us because we're not about money. I still work my job so I can pay my bills. So whatever happens to God's church is God's church. This church is about preaching the gospel. This church is about telling you the truth. We're not trying to get nothing from you. We just want you to have the best life you can have in Christ. You can't have it no other way. Your great life that you desire, it has to be in Christ. But listen to me, church. Your life in Christ will exceed what you think it will be. 
Never in a million years I could have experienced or thought my life could be what it is today. I couldn't dream this up. I don't understand how I got here, but it certainly exceeded all my expectations because when we put our life in the hands of God, what he makes out of our life will exceed what you can ever... Your greatest imaginational thoughts cannot outdo what God can do in your life. Everything Jesus said, he is. He proved it. You can depend on it and rightfully believe it. The founders of other religions, they say, follow me. So many religions telling you to follow them. Every religion that did not get started by Jesus Christ is the wrong religion. So go find out who started those religions. Because Christianity was started by God himself. This is why it's so important that we understand God Almighty who created all things became human. So he can start his religion, his church that's called Christianity. Now, I know a whole lot of people don't believe certain kind of things because they, they, they always try to get, get, get from under God's word. We want to be comfortable. And so we start believing other things because God's stuff sometimes challenges us. And so I know that some people have watered down Christianity. Don't change the fact that it started legit. It started in the right way. It's truth. It's righteousness. It's holiness. It started right. And if we will keep on following it, we will stay right. But if we want to please ourselves, we're going to get tripped up. If Jesus rose from the dead, then Christianity is true. If Jesus rose from the dead, then life does not end at the grave. If Jesus rose from the dead, then you need to do something about it. A new day. When they went to the tomb, they said a new day. It's been a new day for mankind since the early morning of that first day when they went to the tomb and discovered that Jesus had been risen. It's been a new day for us. And so many of us are acting like, oh, life is so terrible. And we, we think that we have to stay in our situation. We can change our situation. <laughs> we don't have to remain in the situation that we're in because Jesus went to the cross. It's been a new day. But the only way we're going to experience uh, that new life is if we obey Christ. We don't need to just be sitting there in our stupor complaining. Look at the word of God and see what he says. Man doesn't have to fear death anymore. Man can trust the words of the Lord Jesus Christ. His disciples may have been surprised by his resurrection, but we should not because we all have evidence of his resurrection. We've had time to process. If you have the gift of the Holy Spirit living in you, that's one of the many proofs that Jesus is living. Amen. Dead spirit can't do nothing. So if you have the Holy Spirit and you speak with tongues, that's another thing. If, if you have the Holy Spirit, you want to speak with tongues as the Bible says. Why? Because the spirit is living. It's not dead. And just saying I have the spirit, nah, I don't really mean I have the spirit. How do you know if the spirit is living and you have the spirit? You're supposed to have evidence of that. We get worked up with talking in tongues. Let me just tell you this. If God give me the strength and God keep his hand upon me and I pray to God I never go sideways, I am going to continue to preach his word like he want me to preach because we need an apostolic witness. The world in this area, we don't know what apostolic is. It's the only church. We don't know what righteousness is. We don't know what holiness is. We don't know what faith is. We just know it's right to go to church and that Jesus loves us. That's where most of us are in this area. But I want God to help me and raise up some people in this church that will preach the word of God and go declare it the way they need to and not sugarcoat it and not make it all, you know, itchy, preach where our ears become itchy and we like it. We're going to like some of the word of God, but it's a lot of it we're not going to like. 
most of the things that are good for us, we don't like it anyway. We don't like vegetables. Not a lot of people like vegetables. What's good for us, we don't like. Corrections is good for us. We don't like to be corrected. As soon as we get corrected, we get mad. And you don't realize correction is good for you. In one sense, Jesus is still on trial. He's on trial in the heart and the mind of every person who has not yet acknowledged him as God Almighty and as the Savior of the world. I'm getting down to the nitty-gritty to close up here, but I'm challenging you this morning. So for many of us, we can say everything we want about Jesus. But if you have not responded because of what he says he is, he's on trial in your life. Mm -hmm. Yes, he is. He's, in he's on trial in your heart, in your mind, if you haven't responded to his word. What's your verdict? Who is Jesus to you? What's your verdict? Who is Jesus to you? Because depending on what you think Jesus is, it will depend on how you live your life. <laughs> Easter really boils down to two issues. One, is Jesus who he says he is? Two, if he is who he says he is, when will you go to do what he says to do? We keep on walking around here talking about Jesus is my savior. Okay, let, my, let me see your life say it. Don't tell me with your mouth. If Jesus really did give his life for your life, don't say it with your mouth. Show me with your life. Jesus was tried, tested, proven to be who he says he is. But what's your verdict today? Do you still sit in judgment? Do you still sit in a place of weighing, well, is he really God? Well, is he really coming back? If he rose from the grave after three days, you best believe he's coming back. And when he comes back, where is he going to find you? What are you going to be doing? Oh, yes, I know he's merciful, but guess what? You know what his mercy means? He has given you opportunities to get saved and get right for a very long time, and you've just been chilling. And he's saying, you don't consider that mercy that I've been giving you time that you don't deserve to get your life right, and you just think mercy means you can live however you want, do whatever you want, and at the end you say, God, help me. But that's how we live in. But that's how we live in. We live in like because God is gracious and God is merciful, we can live however we want. And before we die, he'll help us. The time of the thief on the cross has come and gone. When the thief on the cross, when Jesus said, today you will be with me in paradise, Jesus was walking the earth. He is not walking the earth today physically. And so we're not given the same opportunity as the thief on the cross. Not to mention the thief on the cross time was a different dispensation. That was still Old Testament. It wasn't until Jesus ascended to heaven that the New Testament started, which have a different requirement for us to be saved. We must repent. We must be baptized in the name of Jesus. We must be filled with the Spirit of God. We must be holy. We must be righteous if we're going to be with him. Romans chapter 6, verse 3. I'm going to be out your way in a second. I know this is heavy, but I love you too much to tell you anything other than the word. I'm not going to make this feel good for you just because I'm, the, I, I'm feeling it too. Romans chapter 6, verse number 3 says, Know ye not that so many of us, as we're baptized into Christ, were baptized into his death. Now y'all see the importance of baptism? We ain't talking about christening. When a baby get dedicated like we will today, that's not baptism. Baby don't need to be baptized because baby don't have sins. We dedicate babies to the Lord so their life can be in line with what God has for them. And as they get older, if they live to be older, they get baptized. But as long as they're babies, they, they save, they all right, God's got them. 
It's not until they get older when they know sin and evil and good and unrighteousness. It's then that they need to repent and be baptized. And so we need to be baptized in Jesus Christ. This is why we baptize in the name of Jesus Christ and not in titles, Father, Son, Holy Ghost. When he died, he died for us. Jesus died for us. If you want to be technical, the father didn't die. If you want to be technical. Now, I know he died because Jesus is the father. But, but, but the way I y'all view, you know, all the people that got their old thinking, you know, the trinity, which don't exist. But for those who think like that, the father didn't die for you. So if you're so strongly and you got to baptize in the titles, then, then, then guess what? Who Ask that person, did the father die for you? Because the father is the spirit. The son died. But the Son is God Almighty. I ain't going to mess with y'all too much. Verse 4 says, therefore, when we're baptized, we are buried with him by baptism into death. That like as if Christ was rise or raised up from the dead by the glory of the Father, even so we also should walk in the newness of life. When you get baptized, you identified with him in his death, in his burial, in his resurrection. So when we get baptized the right way, what we do is we repent of our sins. When we repent, that's death. Repentance means I'm not going to live the way I want to live anymore, but I'm going to live the way Christ wants me to live. So repentance means I turn away from the life that I used to live to please myself, and now I'm going to live to please God. That's repentance. You're dying to your old life and living a new life. So you repent, then you get baptized. The baptism is the burial. So when you look at somebody getting baptized, you will see, man, it looks like they got buried. When they come up, uh, guess what? They now will receive the gift of the Holy Spirit with the evidence of speaking in other tongues. That's the resurrection and the newness of life. We don't realize how significant baptism is. We just think, oh, God is good and he understands. Mm -mm -mm. An important question. Who are you going to entrust your death with? Did you hear me? Who are you going to entrust with your death? The statistics of death run 100%. One out of one dies. But what is less known is that one out of one will face judgment after death. Only those who have experienced salvation through Jesus Christ will be able to stand. Listen to me. The altar call was given the day the church began over 2,000 years ago in Acts 2.38. That was the altar call for the church. It is the only experience that will matter on the day eternity begins. And eternity begins when we die. In Hebrews 9 and 27, it says, As or and as it is appointed unto man once to die, but after this. Oh, we're going to die. We can lie to ourselves and say we're going to sleep with Jesus all we want. But the question is, what did you do? To prove that you're going to sleep on with Jesus. Here's another important question. Who are you going to entrust with your life? Yourself? Your grandma? Your mom? Your dad? Your uncle? Who are you going to trust with your life? Somebody that can't rise themselves from the dead? Or somebody that rose from the dead. Listen to me. I'm closing. I finish up here. Upon the resurrection, Jesus showed himself to many people. If you go in your Bible, you start reading, you see that when he rose, he showed himself. When he rose, he didn't just ascend to heaven. He could have been like, I'm tired of them. I've done everything for them. They don't need to see me no more. I'm going to rise from the grave and I'm going to heaven. But he didn't do that. He rose and he showed himself 
to a whole lot of people. If you desire Jesus to show up in your life right now, he will. When Jesus rose from the grave, he didn't immediately ascend to heaven. He went and showed himself among many. When Jesus show up, everything changes. When Jesus show up, miracles happen. When Jesus show up, your mood will change and you will have hope. When Jesus show up, your eyes will open and you will be able to see what you could not see before. When Jesus show up, you will have peace. And Jesus want to show up in every one of your lives right now. You stand with me. He spent 40 days among his disciples before he ascended to heaven. The Lord Jesus desires to be with us. He wants to manifest his presence in our life and in the midst of us. He delights in wanting to be with us. Hear me today. Jesus want to show up in your life right now. Right now. Yes, he won't show up as a physical human. But you will begin to sense his spirit, his presence moving on you. You will begin to get thoughts. Ah, they would almost seem like they're your thoughts, but, but he's giving you a word. He is moving you and directing you. He's stirring you and moving upon you that you will go out, step out on faith and trust him. If you will repent of your sins. He will forgive you of your sins. If you desire to receive the promise of his spirit, he will give it to you if you will just lift your hands and worship him. If you will just praise him, he wants his presence to be manifested in your life. If you desire to enter his kingdom, you can be born again of the water and of the spirit. He can transform your life right where you are today. Jesus is here. He's on trial still in many of our hearts and minds because many of us have not yet accept or receive him for who he says he is. Many of us have not responded in actions, not with lip service. There's a scripture that says, you praise me with your lips, but your heart is far from me. So God is not interested in what we're thinking. He's not interested in what we're saying. He's interested in, in what we're doing. It's time we take him off trial in our life. It's time that we respond to say, God, you are really who you say you are. And because you are who you really say you are, this is what I'm going to do. I'm going to worship you. I'm going to praise you. I'm going to honor you. I'm not going to care about what people think. Church, I can't tell you better than I can tell you this way. The day I stopped worrying about what y'all thought was the day I got Jesus to start working in my life. We come to church. Some of us are afraid to come to the altar. What if God's spirit move on me and I fall out? Who cares? Who are you worried about? What if God begin to fill me with his spirit and I start to act kind of weird? Who cares? What if I begin to cry as I lift my hand? Who cares? He's still on trial in your life then. Jesus, he cried openly when he was being scourged. Jesus was stripped naked openly. Jesus was spat upon so everybody can see. And we're going to worry about coming to the altar. We're going to worry about lifting our hands and worship. We're going to worry about what people think about us when he was scourged and mistreated, never did anything wrong, and that was in front of everybody. There were more people at the cross than was in here today. 
but we carry ourselves around worrying about what everybody think. We're losing out on the great life that God has in store for us because we don't want to step out and be different. We don't want to take on that life that God has for us. But I'm here today to tell you, if you're ready to take Jesus off a trial in your heart, in your mind, and act like he really is God, why don't you come to the altar today? Why don't you worship him like you've never worshiped him? Why don't you surrender your life to him? Because you are taking him off trial in your life. Too many people are still allowing the trial to go on. Because if he did what we know he did, he said he would, and he did it. What, are we, what more are we waiting for? What else are we waiting for Jesus to do for us? I, I just want to know. Because nothing moved forward until I, you, decide we're going to do something about what Jesus has done for us. The book said he went to the cross for you, for you, for you, all of us. He went to the cross for us. He didn't go to the cross for himself. He's holy. He's righteous. He's eternal. He didn't have to go to no cross. He went to the cross for us. How are we going to live the rest of our life? With Jesus on trial? Because if you're not following him, he's still on trial in your life. At some point, judgment the judge will judge and he is the judge at some point he's going to judge so you can have him on trial all you want now but at some point he's going to judge because he has done what he was supposed to do and that is to lay down his life shed his precious blood for all of our sins that we can live a life free from guilt and shame that we can live a life that will make us so free so blessed oh and so free from all the cares of this world that won't give us eternal life if you will lift your hands right now with me this is your day this is your day to settle the trial of Jesus Christ in your life. This is the day that says, I don't care what anybody else thinks. I don't even care what I think. I am going to obey Jesus. I am going to follow Jesus. I am going to trust him because he has shown me that I can trust him. His word is true. I can trust Jesus. If you have never given your life to the Lord, you need to come today and settle it. Give your life to Jesus. Give your life to the Lord today. Settle it. Don't leave out of here without settling the trial in your life. And repent and be baptized and be filled with the gift of the Holy Ghost. Today is your day. Lift your hands and worship the Lord with us right now, right now, right now. Right now, right now. Come on, church. We're going to worship the Lord before we leave out of here. We're going to worship him because we want him to know we're grateful for what he has done. We want him to know we're thankful that he did what he did for us. Oh, hallelujah, 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 hallelujah. Oh, hallelujah. Have your way, Jesus. Have your way, Jesus. Come on, don't let this opportunity slip by. But worship God and tell him, I want your presence in my life. I want you to show up in my life. I want you to overshadow me, Lord, that my life will be changed and I will never be the same again. He's worthy of our praise. Will somebody worship Jesus? Oh, hallelujah. Don't leave today without worshiping the Lord. Let your mind go on Jesus. Begin to think about what he has done. The words I've spoken here today, according to the scriptures, let God have his way. Let God have his 
way. Let God have his way. That's it, that's it, that's it. Talk to him. Talk to him. Talk to him. He's worthy to be praised. He's worthy to be praised.
listen to me. God wants to do great things. Don't look around and worry about what's going on around you. If you feel like God has spoken to your heart and you're ready to take him off trial and says, I'm going to get baptized today. I didn't plan it, but I heard the word. And I don't know when Jesus is coming back. I don't know when the grace of God will run out, but I'm going to give my life today. If you're here today and you're ready to give your life to God, forget if you're ready. If you're here today and you've never given your life to God, you need to come over here and get baptized. You need to come over and repent of your sins. Is there anyone today? Just come on over here. Just come on over here. If you're ready, get baptized. Just come on over here.
as to us saying, we believe you. You have proven to be who you say you are. And Lord, for all that you said you will do and you have done, we trust you. We believe you. And we're going to live our life to make that statement. And today we're grateful that you moved on us, that you spoke to us, and that our eyes became open. Our understanding was now open. And Lord, we will go forward in you according to your word. Lord, as we go from this place today, I thank you for covering us, for keeping us. Lord, help us to walk in your word and by faith and according to your spirit. Let the blessings of God continue to overtake and continue to lead us. Lord, help us. We love you. We honor you. For all those who will get baptized today, oh God, will you show up in a mighty way? Fill them with your spirit as they go down in Jesus' name. For all those who have made up in their mind to walk with you, give them the strength that they need to walk by faith and never, ever give up on you. For our baby dedication, touch those that will be a part of the baby dedication. And Lord, have your way in this church. I love you. I thank you. As we go from this place, we give you the praise and honor. In Jesus' name. God bless you. I love you. I love you, church. Thank you for being here today. Thank you for being focused and allowing God to speak to you. Have a great rest of your day.